Numerical Computation, Chapter 9, Video 4. We now do some error analysis for Taylor Series method. So, go back to the problem setting. So, given an ODE, x prime equals to f of t of x with the initial condition at t0 and x0. So, we first would like to understand the local arrow, that is, the arrow in each time step for Taylor series method of order m. Okay, so, let's have the um, initial data for the step, say, tk, xk, they are given. And we want to compute the value at xk plus 1. So, let's say xk plus 1 will be the numerical solution after one iteration. Also, we denote x as a function of t at tk plus h shall be the exact solution for this initial value problem. That is, the same ODE here, but with initial condition at tk, xk, treating tk as the initial time and xk as the initial value. So this problem will be solved forward in time in a small time step h, and the solution here will be compared to the numerical approximation. Okay, then um, we call this arrow a local truncation arrow, which is defined simply as the distance between these two solutions, the numerical approximation and the exact solution at time step k, and we denote it by E sub k. We have the following theorem. For Taylor series method of order m at step k, the local arrow is of order m plus 1. That is, um, ek is bounded by m times h to the power m plus 1, where m is some bounded constant. We must also stress that this theorem holds for f smooth, that is, all the partial derivatives for f exists abounded. So the proof is quite simple, it's just the application of Taylor theorem, because um, if you look at the difference between these two quantities, where this one is just a truncation of the Taylor series of this function, and the arrow is just dominated by the leading term of all the terms that you throw away, evaluated as some cosine. So we see that x to the uh, differentiation to the m plus 1 times is the same as f differentiating in t m times, okay? because f is already x prime. And then this derivative is evaluated at some psi, lies between tk and tk plus 1. So the constant m here can be choosing as the maximum of this derivative, anything. So as long as the m is bigger than this derivative for any value, then we'll have the following. Then just using the previous equation, we know that the ek now is bounded by some constant m over m plus 1 factorial times h to the m plus 1. So fix m, little m, this expression here is nothing but a constant that says this quantity here is of order h to the power m plus 1. Before we talk about the global arrow, we need to introduce a definition, a definition of um, weld posedness of the ODE. So the definition is the following. The ODE we study, x prime equals to f, of t of x is called well-posed if it is stable with respect to perturbations in initial data. To be precise, this says, if you have two solutions, xt and x tilde t, they are both solutions of the same ODE, but with possibly two different initial conditions, x at t0 is x0, and x tilde at t0 is x0 tilde. Then, given a finer time capital T, we have the following. There, so there exists a constant c independent of t, 
possibly dependent on the capital T, such that the distance in the solution for any T less than capital T is bounded by that constant times the initial distance. So what this say is that um, if you have a small perturbation in the initial data, then your solution at a later time may um, be different, but the difference is bounded by the initial difference and possibly amplified by a factor which is bounded. Now let's talk about the total error. So the total error is the error at the final computing time, capital T. So let's um, fix the total number of steps, iteration step, that's capital N, and H is the grid size, and then we have this relation, and uh, um, which also indicates that the total steps times the step size together, the product equals to the final computing time. Okay, and then the total error is defined as the um, exact solution at capital T minus your numerical approximation, the final step, x capital N, in absolute value. And we have the following theorem, which is a kind of a general theorem. It says that if now we assume the ODE is well posed, well posed following um, the definition we just give that it's um, stable with respect to perturbations on the initial data. And if now the local error of a numerical iteration satisfies ek less than m times h to the power m plus 1, where m is a constant, then the total error satisfies capital E is less than some constant c times h to the power m. Okay, and then here C is a bounded constant. So this means that if the order of the local arrow is M plus 1, the order of the total arrow is always 1 less. And this is a general result. Okay, let's see um, how we can prove that. So first we make two observations, two facts about the arrows. First observation, at every time step k, the local arrow is being carried on through the rest of the simulation. Second, the local arrow accumulates through time iteration steps. Now by the well posedness assumption, we know that at each time step k, the local arrow ek is amplified at most by a factor of c in the answer at the final time t. We have um, the following picture to illustrate this um, amplification of the arrow and accumulation of the arrow. Let's see. At t0, this is x0, and then um, the red curve is the solution of the ODE which means um, the value right here would be the exact um, solution x at t. Okay. But um, we did not solve the equation exactly, we did a numerical approximation. So at t1, your numerical approximation might be just here, not on the red curve. And you have a local arrow, that's e1. Now, starting from T1, let's assume I solve the ODE exact, but using the initial condition T1, X1, and this curve, the red one, is the exact solution using this initial condition, and let's say it ends here. And then the distance between XT and this solution here is nothing but this arrow here, treating this as initial arrow, being propagated at the end, so it can be at most amplified by a factor of c. Okay, so take one more step, and then you use the t1 x1 and you compute it t2, and this will be your answer x2, which will not be on this red curve because you're approximating it. So now we solve the initial value problem using t2 x2 as the initial condition, 
and the answer is predicted by this red curve again. And then between the two last red curves, the distance between them at capital T is bounded by the arrow here at the initial state and possibly amplified by a constant C. So you can um, imagine um, this um, um, procedure being carried on and then let's say at the at the end this um, becomes your xn, your final xn, and then there will be um, n um, of these little intervals where each of them is bounded by c times e to the k. So to understand the final distance between xt and your xn, you could sum up all these arrows caused by local arrow amplified by c as an upper bound. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to add up now all the accumulated arrows at final t. So then this is um, just a summation of k from 1 to n of uh, c times um, the arrow, um, local truncation arrow at step k. Okay, so plug in the upper bound for the arrow, which is m over m plus 1 factorial h to the m plus 1, we see that actually this number here being summed up does not depend on k, so it's just a constant being added up n times. And that is um, exactly this number here multiplied by n. Now, um, staring at this expression, we would like to understand what is the order of this expression. It's h to the what power does it really represent? So we see that um, this number c here is a constant, and this number here is also a constant. It does not depend on h. But however, this number here, n, is the number of iteration. It actually depends on h. What we know is n times h equals to capital T. That's the final time, and that is a constant. So we'll have to borrow one h from here to join the n and uh, to make a constant. So we'll see exactly what is the power on h. Okay, and then borrowing one h over here, and we see now we have only h to the power n. And now we see all of this in front becomes a constant. Okay, so replacing on n h, um, with capital T, we have this thing as a constant, and then this is of order h to the power n. And therefore, the method is of order n. So you see, by adding up all local arrow terms, in the end, you actually lose one power on h because of the summation. So the order of the total arrow usually is one less of that of the local arrow. Okay, hope you enjoyed it. I hope that was useful and see you next time.